previously on when Mason Earl came to town. We learn yet again that I can't climb for crap and that I'm a terrible friend who will spray your failures all over YouTube. We also learned that Mason Earl is simply on another level when he sent our two hardest projects, one on site and the other second try. After that, Mason left our dusty little crag like an old west gunslinger who had collected his bounty and was eager for the next showdown. I knew he'd be moseying back next season and that it was my job to find the next big challenge. But knowing he had already sent Joshua Tree's hardest crack climb, Stingray, with ease, and having witnessed him absolutely hiking our humble projects, I knew this would be no easy task. Fortunately, Hondo provides. Towering above lesser blocks, there is a massive boulder, split clean in half with an overhanging off with crack that almost made me cry when I first laid eyes on it. Partly tears of agony at the thought of trying it, and partly tears of joy because I knew at last I had done it. I had found something that might actually make Mason Earl sweat. It would be almost a full year before Mason returned to Hondo, and waiting patiently for the seasons to change wasn't easy. Not only was the off with waiting, but there was also this other route I had in mind called the Cause Proof Roof. Joshua Tree legend Scott Cosgrove relayed how this obscure route, located in an area outside the national park just on the edge of town known as Section 6, got its name one day while he gave me a tour of his old bouldering circuit there. Legend has it that two locals had worked this roof crack into submission on top rope over the course of a few days, and then invited Cause to give it a try. When Kazi failed to send the line in a couple goes, they thought it would be funny to call it the Cause Proof Roof. And the story goes that it never got led and then faded into obscurity. Well, that's just Mason's game. So before showing him the off with, we swooped up our buddy Quentin for a belay and went to check it out. Oh, Mason, what the hell are we doing here? Out at this roof crack in section six. <laughs> yep, and uh, it looks like it should probably put up a pretty good fight, if I had to guess. Wide hands or fists. My nemesis. Taking Mason to this dinky doink, forgotten, six foot roof crack kind of felt like taking a Ferrari to a go-kart track. It was blazing hot that day. And honestly, when I stood under the route, I thought, why the hell did I bring him here? But Mason ain't no prima donna and he was ready to rock climb. All right, I'm tied in. Come on. No this Having heard about the route, I knew it was damn hard, and I knew the crux was just past the lip where the crack widens up to fists. I couldn't wait to see what Mason was gonna do. Crack climbing is perhaps the most technical form of climbing, and I consider it an art form. Like in martial arts, a true master can defeat an opponent using pure skill, oftentimes using very little muscle. Mason is at the top 1% of this game. Watch how fast he figures this crux out. Most climbers would do exactly what he's trying here, leading with their left fist up high and shuffling their right hand to the corner of the lip. But that's a trap. Mason senses this instantly, reverses his left hand, brings it back down to the lip, and makes a massive reach past the trap, setting himself up perfectly to pull over. It's this ability to move through a section of a climb in a matter of seconds that could shut down even a very strong climber or at the least exhaust them working it out that separates pros like Mason from the rest and allows them to climb those huge multi-pitch trad lines that boggle our minds. But it's not over yet and there's no pretty way past this next part. 
Technique alone won't cut it for an ultra runner, and it won't cut it here. Sometimes all that's left is to dig deep and put one knee in front of the other. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, <dude. God. laughs> that was horrific. <laughs> that was horrific. Good job, man. Oh, thank you. That was <laughs> sick. Also fantastic. <laughs> What do you think of that cue? It's amazing, dude. All right. It's so cool that he had to grovel for a second. It's awesome. That was a savage wide hands fist crack. Get definitely uh, really burly and awkward at the lip. Kind of was starting to run out of ideas, so I threw this heel hook up over the left side and then just sort of started groveling on my knees up over the lip. I didn't even, my feet weren't even really on. Yeah, that was sick. That was what sick. kind of grade do you think it is, if you care to guess? I mean, J Tree, it's probably J Tree 11A. Really? It's not that hard? Well, no, I thought it was 512. But <laughs> these types of things, you have to, you know, there's a long history of sandbagging wide climbs that, you know, we have to uh, adhere to. Well, he did it again. I'd taken him to the most obscure, awkward, bullshit crack I knew of, and the madman did it first try and called it 11A. Now I was sweating, and I feared for the offwood's integrity. Mason was coming, and he doesn't take prisoners. Trying to kill me? <laughs> that is steep. That's really steep. <laughs> oh, it's not gonna be pretty. Well, I'm not really sure what that's gonna entail. Be honest. This wasn't any casual mission. <laughs> <laughs> Things just got real. It's an insane feature. I mean, that, this rock is like cracked, like, like two whales. Going straight for the lead, huh? Oh yeah. No other way to do it on this one. What do you think when you rack up for something like this that you've never been on? I just don't, I know that I'm in for it, that's it. That's all I know. Done enough of these types of things to <clears throat> know what kind of what kind of pain I'm going to be in tonight. What were you telling me about? You we're going to not do as many offwits, and then you decided to do more, or you happened to this year? Yeah, usually I just do. I have a quota of one off with a year, but it's been um, I've gone overtime this year somehow. Just keep offwits keep getting put in front of me. It's hard to say no. <laughs> do people hit you up and say, Mason, you we know, need you to this, do this. This dude in J Tree hit me up and took me out to some fucked up cracks. And, you know, don't trust strangers. Don't talk to strangers. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a real deal. I mean, this is, I put this on the map. If you climb it, they will come. I actually kind of hope I get my ass kicked. It's harder, harder and harder to find ass kickings these days. This, 
have a good feeling about. Keep a streamlined fabric situation. You don't want your pants getting bunched up. It's exciting to think that nobody's done it, but it's also exciting to think that there's could be still some fucking choss flakes up there that <laughs> I don't know about. Okay, it's the good deal. Just as I was, had planned. Good. Ah, fucking nuggets. Good God. Having stood at the base of this crack, I couldn't figure out how you would even pull off the ground. No surprise there, as we all know I suck, and I'm certainly not an experienced off-with climber, but even to me it was obvious this climb was going to require some out-of-the-box thinking. But that still didn't prepare me for what I was about to witness, which is why when Mason started with a savage hand stack and then went directly inverted, I could hardly believe my eyes. The man was climbing completely upside down. Oh, you can take shit. Oh. Fuck nuggets. <laughs> Man. Good effort, dude. Thanks, dude. This number six is sketchy. Oh. Fuck. I tried. <laughs> I think I've got to stay inverted. Couldn't get any stacks up there. Hmm. Oh my god, that was fucking sick. <laughs> Mason had spent a grueling 2 minutes and 35 seconds upside down, hanging from his shin bones, and had only made it about 9 feet up the climb. Just as we both had hoped, this wasn't going to be easy. Oh yeah, I give this thing uh, 4 out of 4 stars. Good rock, good movement, no cheater holds. It's pretty rare, kind of crack to find. After a quick breather and a primal scream, ah! Mason was back to his high point. 
convinced now that he would need to stay inverted the entire climb. This thing is really, really high quality. It's good rock in there. It's a bad size. It wants to cut your rope. This is definitely one of the gnarliest white cracks I've been on in a while. It's uh, there's, it's not. It's, it's really straightforward. It's just a pure inverted gravel, and I just can't. Just wasn't <clears throat> doing it. I just didn't do it. I didn't know how to pull over the top. I didn't know how to get my feet through. The gear is uh, hard to manage. Oh, that's all I got for today. The next time I come up here, my feet will be just a little bit more acclimatized to that kind of deal. And it'll hopefully feel just a little bit better. Next time, does that mean you want to, you got to come back and do this thing or? You know, yeah, you opened the lion's cage when you brought me out here. <laughs> or I should say you fucking let me into the, let me into the ring. It's a worthy adversary. It is not often in my travels that I find a worthy adversary or a worthy challenge. It's rarer and rarer these days, huh? Yep. I just, for me to really, like, I don't know, I love sport climbing and projecting routes, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot you get out of that, but something like this is so complete, such a complete ass-kicking that, um, I guess it's pretty psyched. <laughs> Against all odds, it finally happened. I had found a crack that was as tough as Mason. The hook was set deep, and the lion was out of his cage. Stay tuned for part two and the conclusion to our story. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss it.